All right, boys and girls, let's finish up this light printing project. Let's put this thing to bed. Let's be done. Let's do a really quick review of how we got to the point we're at. The first thing we did was we looked at all our images in Bridge and we reorganized them and got them in order by clicking and dragging and moving them around, getting them all in order and ready to go. Then we selected all of them by clicking on the first one, holding down shift and clicking on the last one. We did a little tools batch rename to rename them all just like this. Then we resized them by making a new empty folder to put them into. And with them all selected, we went into camera raw, which is this little dude up here. We press control A to select them all. We hit save images and we selected that folder we chose. And the most important thing we did in here was we changed the width and the height to 1080 pixels. And of course we changed the file extension to JPEG. And then we hit save and those all saved for us. And then we went into Photoshop and we brought up our timeline by going to Window, Workspace, Motion. And we clicked on this little dude and we clicked on Add Media and we loaded up all of our images. And then because we're smart and responsible and we've already done a lot of work, the very first thing we did was we saved our project and we put it in a folder where we could find it and we gave it a good name that we could remember like Final Movie. I'm not actually going to save mine because I already did. We then went through and we did a levels adjustments on some of our slides so that the brightness would be consistent. So if we had a slide like this one that was all of a sudden brighter than all of our other ones, we could darken it down by clicking on it and pressing control L and using this slider to darken it down a little bit. We also talked about changing the color of our image by doing control U and remembering that we can't do anything to an image unless the playhead is over it and we click on it then we can do control u and we can move the hue slider to change the color of our image but then we realize that that changes the whole image you'll notice that color is changing there and up here so we thought well there's got to be a better way so we learned about the lasso tool and how we can draw selections around things and with a selection around something when we do control u only what's inside of the selection gets adjusted and that made us really happy. And we learned that when we're done with our selections, we can just press Control D to make them go away. We then went through and looked to see if any of our clips needed to be resized or rotated. And if they did, especially if we had a whole series of them, we clicked on the first one, held down Shift, clicked on the last one. And then we did Control T. And we either rotated them if we needed to by holding down Shift and clicking and dragging outside of the corner. Or we resized them as needed by holding down shift and alt and dragging from the corner and then pressing enter and you can see that did that for all of those images for me I didn't actually want that so let's control alt z to undo that then we went in and we zoomed way in on our timeline starting at the very beginning zoomed way in and we changed the this was the hard most time consuming part we changed the duration of all our clips to just eight frames and we all grumbled thinking there's got to be a better way to do this and unfortunately there is not. So we spent 15 minutes just doing this the hard time consuming way. And of course, because we're smart, we went to file save frequently and saved our work so that we didn't lose any. And then we learned about pressing control R to bring our rulers up and clicking and dragging and pulling these lines out and using these lines to go through our slideshow and make sure that our slides all matched up and lined up. And we drew selections around letters that we wanted to move that we weren't crazy about the west spot they were in, so we wanted to move just the H. That was a selection, and that's annoying. So we drew a selection around just the H, and we did Control T, and then we remembered that you have to click on the clip before you can press Control T, and then I could then move the H, and I could resize it and stretch it out if I wanted to, because this is just text, and there's no people in it. And we press Control D to make that selection go away. And we use these lines to go through our whole production and fix things like the fact that this circle was not in the same spot and that it was constantly bouncing around. So we drew lines around it and then we used those lines to make sure that our circle stayed in the same spot instead of bouncing around all over the place like you see here. Then we, re we re learned about advanced selections where we could make, draw a selection around things and so we could right click and choose feather and set it to about 15 and that would soften up our edges and make our adjustments blend in and the last thing we did is we changed the names at the end of our movie so that they showed up and looked a little bit more awesome and you can go back and watch those videos to learn more about all that stuff 
But that's everything we've done up to this point, and I think we're ready to wrap this thing up and call it a day. So let's do it. Okay, the <clears throat> last thing we want to do is we just want to make sure before we export our video that it's going to look good. One of the things we need to check is, remember these spots right here, I promise you those we're going to fill in with black later on. But I just want to check to make sure those are going to look good before I go through the trouble to save my video. So I'm going to put some black behind this. Let me show you how we're going to do that. The easiest way to do that is come over here to your layers palette. Go up to the very top. See this video group one? Click on that little down arrow, and that's going to collapse it. All those things are still there. They're just hiding inside this folder. And then come all the way back over here to our timeline and click on this little down arrow where we did our add media. Only this time we're going to click on new video group. And you can see over here in my layers palette, back over here, I now have a video group two. Well, I'm just going to click and drag video group two underneath video group one. Whoops. I just made a huge mistake. I dragged it into video group one. You don't want to do that. Make sure you drag it down far enough that it's underneath it so that it shows up like that. If you accidentally drag it into it, just do control alt Z to undo that. And then just make sure when you drag it, you put it way down here so that it goes underneath it. And then with video group two selected, I'm going to come down here to the bottom of my layers palette. I'm going to click on this new layer button right there. Click right on that, dude. That's going to give us a new blank layer. First thing I want to do is zoom out on my timeline so I can see the whole thing. And I want to extend this layer out so that it fills up my whole timeline. It goes all the way to the end of my slides, and I'll stop it right there. And the only thing I'm going to put on here is I'm going to fill it with black. So with my layer one selected over here in my video group two layers palette, I'm just going to come up here and go to edit, fill, and make sure this right here was says contents. I'm going to set that to black and press OK. And that now is filling in those holes with black. So now I can go through and anywhere I have holes or gaps, I can see what it's going to look like with it being filled in like that. And if I need to make some changes or some fixes, I'll do it so that it looks better but up to uh, as uh, as for that we're pretty much done i think we've got everything just the way we want it and i think we should export this bad boy and save it as a video file that we can share on Flickr or youtube or wherever we want so how do we do that we first thing you want to do is save your project let's go to file save save up our project so that we don't lose any work all right i've got mine saved up now this time i'm going to go to file I'm going to come all the way down here to export. And I'm looking for down here at the bottom, render video. This is going to export our video file in a manner that we can uh, share on the internet. First thing you want to do is give it a name. Uh, call it, uh, I would call it light painting final because we're done. And you can just leave it like that. You want to select your folder. I'm recording this video at home, so I don't have access to our drives that we have at school. So just go into your photo drive, into your folder, and save it where you can find it. I'm just going to drop mine on my desktop, but you put yours where it belongs. And we're not going to really do anything else. We want to make sure our preset here is on high quality and everything looks good here. This one should be on all frames, so we'll just leave that on all frame. And I think we're good to go. Don't really cha change anything and just go ahead and click on render. This might take a few minutes, so just kick back and relax while this renders for us. All right, almost done. It just depends on how many images you have, is how long it's going to take. And yes, we are done. Let's close, minimize Photoshop. Find your uh, file that you saved. Here's mine, Light Painting Final. I can just double click on this and it'll pop up in my media player and play for me. And beautiful. Now, this file needs to be uploaded to Flickr or if you have a YouTube channel and you want to upload it to YouTube. That is fine as well. So go to Canvas, find the find the link to the assignment on today's on the announcement, and go to it. Make sure you join the group because I want to make sure you add your video to the group like you're supposed to. Uh, so you do need to put it on Flickr for that. But if you want to put it on your own YouTube, you are of course more than welcome to. And make sure you turn in the link to it on Canvas, and we are finally done.